Bitcoin on the horizon worth taking note of today. The Bitcoin having is upon us. From Forbes.com, I want to share one mainstream story site in contrast here. Experts think you should buy only if you're hodling. And here they are in a, in a sort of tongue in cheek way, uh, referencing or making fun of the Bitcoin community's deliberate misspelling meme of saying that holding is hodling, specifically referring to Bitcoin. The much anticipated Bitcoin halving is upon us, an event that sees the BTC reward that miners receive for processing transactions on the Bitcoin network divvy up for the third time in history. Just so you guys have a sense, this is a big point in the history of Bitcoin. In theory, the value of the most prominent cryptocurrency should rise following the halving event since it means that new units would be harder to produce. That narrative has received support from the bull runs pre and post the first two halving events, 2016 and 2012. Within a year after the first halving, Bitcoin rose over 90 times from the $10 region to a peak of about $1,180. For the second halving, Bitcoin went as high as $2,800 from around $600 within a year before peaking at nearly $20,000 December 2017. However, the crypto market has notably matured compared to 2012 and 2016. For one, Bitcoin derivatives, including futures and options, are relatively more prominent these days, allowing for a more advanced price discoveries among market participants. What that means, futures and options, in economic terms, it means that people have the mechanisms of betting on Bitcoin in all sorts of different ways, either you know it, it, options that it's going to go up or puts and that it's going to go down. What this has as an effect is a smoothing of the market. So you don't have the extreme swings up and down as a result. So that's what they're referring to in terms of a market having matured. By implication, the narrative of a rally driven by the supply squeeze might not play out so simply, at least not in the short term. So here is the mainstream media with Forbes, of course, with a strong interest in anything other than Bitcoin, basically anything that is counted in dollars as opposed to crypto. Of course, they're going to be downplaying this, but it's nice that at least they're covering this. And I don't mean to uh, you know, disparage them too much, but these are the same people who for years called Bitcoin a scam and a racket and did everything to fight instant adoption and, and still are. So there's another section here. Scroll down if you would please, CJ. Bit, BTC currently has a bearish market sentiment despite having, in the meantime, certain Bitcoin market data show that traders have a bearish sentiment, high demand for put options. That is people predicting that it would go down. When you dig into the options data, it looks like the market is placing a premium on contracts that are below the current prices. The options market seems to be suggesting that there's more concern over prices moving downward. The Bitcoin BTC put call ratio data from crypto analytics firm SKU echoes the sentiment as indicated in the chart below. The ratio has been trending north. A rising put call ratio suggests that there's mounting demand for put contracts. Of course, this also means that the market is subject to a different kind of manipulation. The fact that traders have gotten involved enough to be able to create these mechanisms of people betting against Bitcoin means that that is another venue for manipulation. Now, the bigger thing that's not being pointed out here is that we are in the middle of coronaphobia, and most people who owned Bitcoin didn't do it as part of their daily economic transactions. They owned Bitcoin more as an investment. It was a they, they were hodlers. They were holding Bitcoins with the hope of them going up for the long term, which means that they weren't really seeing them as money, or at least they weren't using them as money, even if they saw it that way they were using this as an investment device. And what we saw, as with any major economic contraction around the forced unemployment crisis of coronaphobia, is a rush to liquidity, a dropping in all assets except the dollar, because people now are hoarding dollars. They want to get out of assets that the government might drive to zero in this crisis, or at least have a significant effect reducing the value of. So I'm not going to call this one way or another. Is the having going to be the great trend? Do the put options have a greater bearing on the market now in the short term? Short term doesn't matter. I encourage everybody to understand what's going on with Bitcoin, to understand what it is, 
and to invest in it and see it as a long-term investment as this mainstream article shows but i'm sure someone in the comments already is telling me no adam there's going to be a spike here short-term traders like you used to be are playing this you should get back in the game so i go to 99bitcoins.com now for just a little explanation of exactly what the having represents what is the bitcoin having what does it mean when does it happen what happens to the value da, 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 da. so every four years on average 210,000 blocks that is blocks mined of the bitcoin blockchain the reward granted to bitcoin miners for adding a block to the blockchain is cut in half this was designed by satoshi nakamoto to keep inflation in check this is a really critical mechanism of bitcoin now you don't have to understand this to use it and the mechanism when i see this this is why i'm i'm more of a fan of crypto as a concept than bitcoin in particular of course i'm a huge fan of bitcoin as being the first proof of concept the first to market and still currently the dominant cryptocurrency but it is this is this the right interval is there going to be a, a new cryptocurrency that, that renders bitcoin obsolete i get the arguments from the bitcoin maximalists who say this is it to the end bitcoin is the one that's going to displace fiat currency and they could be right but i'm skeptical because i see that even with this system there's room for improvement and also to create something that might have more buy-in when it has more broad distribution from the beginning and i'm not saying americoin is the answer here because americoin is going to be limited to americans with social security numbers but what if there was a way to create a new global fiat excuse me a new global cryptocurrency that was somehow claimable by every single human being on earth with a thumbprint scan I'm just kind of spitballing here, right? But say there, say someone created the new, say we got to the next era of technology, right? Where like we're, we, we had to level up from, you know, primitive internet to developed internet with massive hard drives in everybody's machines to be able to have Bitcoin. Because when Bitcoin started, I've downloaded the entire blockchain. It needed that to advance. Maybe we need the next level to get to what I'm suggesting. But I would rather use a coin that helps us eliminate the current debt record eliminate the current concentrations of wealth and power that satoshi nakamoto whether it's craig wright or somebody else controls half the bitcoin out there that early adopters of this system have have undue wealth and influence in, in the bitcoin system seems to be failing one potential of crypto which is to level the debt record and it's going to level the debt record counted in dollars but if it creates a new system of economic inequality based on who was the first to adopt Bitcoin, yeah, at least it's voluntary. It'd certainly be a step in the right direction. But I believe there's going to be another leap. In AmeriCoin, we get to distribute a thousand tokens by airdrop to every single American in one go. Pretty exciting that as we bankrupt the federal government, we also get to show a new possibility with cryptocurrency. Might that be? I mean, shit, we're going to be launching a cryptocurrency with 330 million active users and an asset uh, backing it in terms of the assets of the federal government as we're liquidating it. That gives us a pretty huge competitive advantage as a cryptocurrency. So uh, I think that would go a long way to moving us away from the current cryptos with their imbalances and fiat and all the way, not to AmeriCoin, but to the next leap forward which is going to be a, an even more equitable decentralized monetary system than than anything we have today. So since the halving basically cuts the supply of new Bitcoins in half, many believe this event will have a dramatic effect on Bitcoin's price. That's the halving in a nutshell. If you want a more detailed explanation, having keep on reading. So what is it? I want to encourage everybody. If you don't have this background, please go check out this article. It will be in the show notes today. 99bitcoins.com and uh I, I, it is it is it really shows so much of the virtue of bitcoin but also the potential of cryptocurrency and getting away from fiat currency altogether and i hope if you're watching this show you know just how critical that is to the advancement of humanity <laughs>